fans, welcome to another edition of Pirate Classics Pregame with our head football coach, Steve Mushagian, as we break down the 2019 season-ending game at Long Beach City College. Uh, coach Moose, nice to have you on again. It's great to be on today. It's a great day uh, getting uh, the okay from the 3C2A to have our spring season makes it even better. And maybe if we uh, could end this Long Beach game after the third quarter, we'd be, it'd be good. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll start talking about this Long Beach game. We'll, we'll touch on what happened today in our board meeting and, and some other Ventura College Pirate football news. Big game. Uh, the week before, they hooked us up by beating College of the Canyons. So we're, us going down there, Canyons has their game. Titles on the line for everybody. So three-way tie. What was preparation like for the week? Well, it made it much easier for us when Long Beach beat the snot out of Canyons physically and, and on the scoreboard. So um, it made it a little bit easier for us because it was like, hey, if you want a chance, you know, our only chance of having a opportunity to get back in the playoffs or hosting a bowl game they knew what was at stake I felt pretty good because we've always played really well going to that part of Southern California the games have always been down to a wire whether it was El Camino whether it was LA Harbor whether it was Long Beach City or Cerritos anytime we ventured into that uh, actually where I grew up uh, <laughs> it, it's always been a, a four-quarter game most of the games have gone down to the last play of the game as, as this one pretty much did too. So um, we were excited for the opportunity to get a second chance. And we talked, it was very easy because in 2018, it was the same kind of thing, you know, where we got the opportunity in the playoffs to play a team that we had lost to. And so this was going to make it a, a victory would make it a three-way tie, you know, and give us our fifth title in six years. So, um, it was, there was a lot at stake. So when we look at this game, kind of the tail of uh, three quarters and then the fourth, uh, first three quarters, offense clicking, Dino Maldonado got, you know, got the start at quarterback, goes for 257. Uh, Jaden Vargas rushes for 86. Terrell Vaughn gets another 98. Catching, and most of it was in those first three quarters. And then the defense, you know, giving up only 10 points. What goes on as you get closer to knowing that, you're up big going in the fourth quarter. Everyone's playing well. Uh, is it kind of the tale of the seasons that we've been talking about? Well, every time we've played, you know, Long Beach City or even it's really Coach Peabody. It's Brett Peabody. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great guy. Um, we have had since 2012 at L.A. Harbor and then 2013, his first year at Long Beach. And then 2018 Long Beach game that they were up big on us and we had to come back. So. I kept sitting there thinking, oh, my God, is this going to be the reverse of 2018 where they were up big and we came back and won it? Uh, really, our defense played great. Uh, offense was clicking. We made some big plays. But our defense stayed consistently good. And most of the, you know, we fumbled a snap um, and then tried to hand it off, and they recovered a fumble. So we gave them a short field, and they were able to get back in the game a lot of a lot of it because of our mistakes. Uh, and it seemed like we played very loose for three quarters and we got in the fourth quarter, the offense tensed up and, and they started playing not to, not to lose instead of playing the win and put the game away. And that's the, by far the toughest thing um, at the junior college level for us. You know, if I could say one thing that's gone over, you know, my 10 year, career at Ventura College is no game's over. It isn't over till it's over. I mean, you got to play four quarters. It's a four quarter game. The guys get giddy and they start thinking about other things. Their, their focus, you know, lose attention to detail. And that's, I think what happened, but our defense just gave Long Beach City fits. And when their last drive, they had to try to take it to, you know, 80 yards and our defense did a great job. And we put in some things Mike Caden, Terry Morris, Lonnie McC McCowans, uh, they did a great job. They put some wrinkles in uh, in the secondary, and we played some of our secondary guys at linebacker and, and spied their quarterback who could run. So they had a really good game plan. I mean, we played really, really well that night defensively. Well, when we, we talk about the defense, you know, that was probably one of the most emotional games I was at on, on the goal line stand. I, I think that was what it came down to. And they were, Long Beach was able to run the ball. 
And I think me and you looked at each other for like third and fourth down. <laughs> just kind of looked at each other and said, all right, here we go. Let's see what happens. And, and the defense just comes up huge. Yeah, I think it was them. the third down play that uh, Jalen Cooper came off the edge and made a big time tackle for loss. Uh, and that set the whole emotion for the next play. I mean, there was no way our, our guys, you know, that really made the difference in the ball game, that play, because they did get the ball back you know, they did get the ball back late again, mm -hmm. but uh, the emotion of Jalen's tackle for loss, I think, you know, parlayed into us finishing, but that was a, that, you know, that was a game that you pull your hair out and probably get a few more gray hairs and uh, you can see them. They're, they're growing. My COVID uh, <laughs> growth right there is coming in gray and Long Beach city game of 2019 is partially the reason. Yes. Uh, and, and coming out on top though, like you said, fifth title, uh in a row right we're five in a row now it was five out of six because we of six. didn't get it in we didn't get it in 18 but we did end up winning the southern california championship <laughs> yeah. so i'd rather take that anyway so yeah. it was six six championships in a row yes yeah so you know it, it comes out to be this great day uh great night even though we didn't get into the state playoff uh, it leads us to hosting another bowl game another ring uh how is that you know, when you know you're just playing in a bowl game, big emotional game, how do you talk to the players about the whole season now? That was the toughest part because our kids had wanted a chance to uh, get back in the playoffs and redeem themselves and felt like they could uh, match up with everybody. They wanted another chance at Saddleback. They wanted another chance at Canyons. And there was uh, – it was a crazy, we had changed the tiebreakers and things. So it, I kind of knew that what needed to happen and certain teams had to beat certain teams. And it was kind of one of those things where it went back to somebody we played in preseason that uh, versus who somebody else played, who Canyons played in preseason. And they ended up, one guy had a five and five record. The other one had a four and six. So it was a point, you know, they got the point for that. So it ended up being one point and they got in the playoffs. We didn't. Um, so we had to host the bowl game and it was a little bit of a letdown. It, it was really hard to get our guys to uh, play with that same emotion that they did in a playoff game. Cause there were so many of them that, uh, you know, that was just kind of the standard that we'd set. Yeah. Well, so let's, was, let's talk a about high, a high from Long Beach city. And then the next day I had to go be a part of the selection committee. And, <laughs> and so I, I, I got to experience the highs and the lows. And then you had to tell the team on Monday, you were, we're going to a bowl game. We're not going. Yeah. To the yeah so let, let's talk about more current events. Uh, first, the triple C two a board of directors voted today. Uh, they voted to move forward with their spring season and also to give everybody an exemption, uh, if we do play, we, we still have to get to January. Well, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think it's the right thing to do. And I, I was very pleased with our president, uh, Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Kim Hoffman's did a great job. She actually, I really believe we both talked about this. She kind of changed the tune and, and got everybody back on focus to make the vote uh, and get the you know job at hand, so to speak. I think they did the right thing. I think that the people out there are going to have to understand that our schedule will be fluid. I mean, we have a seven game schedule right now um, that has, you know, been released uh, with two non-conference games and five conference games, but because there are three LA County teams in our conference and that's really, it's kind of up to each health department to make a decision uh, on things. So, you know, where we are in Ventura County, where they are in Kern, you know, San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara County could dictate uh, our conference could very easily become the old Western state, so to speak, for uh, for the season. So we might not play any games in, uh, you know, in L.A. County. That's that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, Orange County, possibly, but I'm sure they're going to encourage us to stay north versus going south but that's what the ad's and the deans and the presidents they, they get the big bucks got to make those decisions that's above my pay grade i guess yeah and you're right dr hoffman's got got the conversation back in a direction we we would want to hear about the student athletes you know la 
if people don't know out there dealing with Southern California, so many different counties and rules and this, that if we can be more localized, we want to have a season. We want our student athletes to go out there and play. We know it won't count toward their eligibility at our level or the NCAA level. So it's kind of a, a win-win for them. If we could play, they stay in track academically. Uh, it, it keeps us moving forward in, in what we do, not only on the field, but off the field. So without you know, a doubt, and I think it's going to help them academically, just as you stated that, you know, they can play in the, in the spring. And if they don't get, you know, the offers that they want, or they want to bet on themselves and stay another uh, semester and finish their AA, or maybe, uh, you know, up their GPA, whatever it may be, they're going to get a second opportunity and they could feasibly get, you know, as many as they could play as many as, 20 games, as crazy as it sounds, if they played seven or eight in the spring, which I think, you know, is it could be anywhere from five to nine, you know, depending on what, what happens. And you could play as many as 13 in the fall. So somebody could get a lot more film and it gives us the opportunity to play a lot of people. We don't have to worry about you're going to gray shirt, you're going to red shirt, you're all playing. I mean, if you're, if you're healthy and, you know, it's for, because we're going to put safety in at first and you're ready just because you're on the roster. Sometimes kids are on the roster and they're not ready yet. And yeah. I'm not going to throw anybody out there that's for safety reasons, you know, and, and we don't have to worry as much about, you know, the, the playoff burst or all those other things, so to speak. I mean, as it stands right now, I'm pushing that we do have a postseason because I think the kids need, to, they need to have some kind of, something that they're playing for that you know a gold at the end a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so to speak yeah no that, that that's good so that's the first good news the second thing uh great news coming out of the nfl you know we've had a success story already jesse limonera he's, he's gotten to three games but we find out earlier earlier this week jake luton getting his first nfl start first ventura college player in seven years that started in the nfl I think it's the first time in a couple of decades we've had two active players in the NFL. You know, how does that make you feel as a coach? How does that make the program look? This kind of that good news where you think about this fall where we're not playing COVID and, and we get to hear this, we get to see this. It, it's, it's great. You know, it's been great on Saturdays to watch some of our guys that are playing at the next level and see on success, successive weekends, we've had a tight end score a touchdown in power five. We had, you know, Daniel Moraga at Pitt and then Travis Coons had a 75 yarder for Texas Tech against Oklahoma. And then you get news on Sunday that uh, Garner Minshew has hurt his thumb and that there's possibility for uh, Jake Luton to be the starter. And you're thinking, you know, here's a guy that uh, called me, we talked uh, and I talked him out of going to Fullerton uh, <laughs> to come to Ventura. <laughs> Uh, we had numerous conversations. I talked to his mom on the phone and, and I said, look, I'm just trying to give him the keys to the car. And <laughs> she loved it. And she trusted, uh, you know, trusted us. And, and, you know, it was a great, uh, a great season. He came to us from the University of Idaho. Uh, he used to bring his dog to practice in a kennel and have to leave it in the office when we went out to the field. So I got to know his uh, golden doodle Remington pretty well, but uh, which is another side story that w was funny, but uh, Jake was a great kid. You know, he came in and, and did all the things we asked him to do. But I remember the very first day we're in one-on-ones and Lonnie and Terry are back there with me and he threw a ball and I just looked, I go, that, that it's an NFL arm. I've seen a few and that's an NFL arm. And I knew in the back of my mind that if he did things, you know, if things went the right way, because making the NFL is one thing, but uh, you know, or getting to the NFL is one thing, and but getting through college sometimes, uh, through all the ups and downs, he had a couple injuries and and uh, serious injuries that he became the comeback player of the year in the NCAA. So he's been through a lot, you know, and and to see him, I'm excited for him. And I t we talked text the other day, and uh, he was very appreciative, and he's very appreciative of his time at Ventura College. If you look on his. Twitter or anything, he says, you know, BC Pirate alum. So he's very proud of it too. And and we're proud of him and excited for uh, 
for Saturday. At least he gets its two. It's kind of funny. It's two one and six teams, Jacksonville against Houston. So, you know, at least at least it's not uh, playing the Kansas City Chiefs or someone like that. Pittsburgh's defense coming yeah. out. Pittsburgh, Baltimore, any of those. Yeah. So that's great. So we got a great weekend set up for us with Pirate Classic Saturday night with the Long Beach City game where we clinched uh, another championship. And then on sun Saturdays during the day, we could watch, you know, there's about 10 alumni right now playing. And then now Sunday, we got two alumni playing. So if you can catch the Chargers and watch Jesse or, you know, if you got uh, direct TV and the Sunday ticket, don't be afraid to put your password out there. <laughs> your login for us BC fans that don't right. have that, watch that 10 a.m. game out in Jacksonville and watch Jake uh, get his first start. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, actually, Jimmy, it's been crazy because Wednesday night, you know, you had Kent State, we have our punter Ian Henze and, and our old coach Juan Soto that's there. And then Thursday night, last night, I got to watch Tyler Orsini in Nevada. And, and tonight, I think Scott Breslin at San Jose State. So I mean, it, it's, uh, it's turned into uh, the perfect year to have COVID, I guess, for, <laughs> for me to be able to get a chance to see guys that, you know, you you may not have been able to as, as much yeah. uh, as we're, as we have. And then, you know, the icing on the cake is Sunday, yeah. you know, with, with Jake, Jake Luton getting the start. So it's five days of football with all the other craziness that's going on in the world. That's the one thing that stayed consistent through the whole thing. Well, it shows a testament to what you've done here at Ventura college, what your staff has done here at Ventura college. You know, these young men get an opportunity. It's kind of like what we do in the state. We talked about in our meetings statewide is this is an opportunity. And, and these young men was given the, were given the opportunity. And now they get to fulfill dreams. And whatever they do, it's, it's it, like you said, icing on the cake. You know, they get their degrees. They get a chance to play at a high level. And some of them get the, get the chance to play at a higher level. Uh, right. And so it's a testament of what you and your staff has done in the past 10 years. Uh, the next two weeks for Pirate Classics are going to be big. Well, yeah, that 2018 season hasn't finished yet. So uh, we'll have, I think we're going to bring the rest of the coaching staff on the next two weeks if they want to, and, and talk about those two games uh, that you had in 2018. Uh, they were special. Those, yeah. those were special, uh, very special season, very special uh, bunch of groups. I think what you were stating about both Jesse, the thing for our listeners to understand is both Jesse Lemonier has his bachelor's degree from Liberty University and Jake Luton has his bachelor's degree from Oregon State, and they're both in the NFL, so they did things right, and they weren't always on, you know, they had to go through a lot of perseverance and, and things that happened. It wasn't an easy path, and where they are now makes it even, makes me even more proud of who they've become. Yeah. We just got them back on track. That's, that's what we did our job. We fixed their deficiencies and then got them back on track. Yeah. So, well, it's always a pleasure to have you on, fans. Uh, Saturday night, 6 p.m. on the uh, Crown Plaza, Ventura Beach, BC Sports Network. We can watch and relive that Long Beach City game in 2019. And again, thanks for coming on. Yeah. <laughs> Two more weeks left in, the, in, the, in our classic series. I, I Believe me, I, I'm waiting for those. And, and those aren't going to exactly uh, games that weren't over till the, till the last play either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Moose, have a great weekend. We will see you next week. Thank you, Jimmy. Go Pirates.